In this video, we're going to recreate the advanced submenu from the Uber menu demo site. So let's just do a quick overview of what's in this submenu. It's actually pretty simple. There are just two submenu items, and they're both custom content items. Each item contains a shortcode. So on the left, we have a custom content item, which has a Maps shortcode in it, and the Google Maps shortcode is actually built into Uber menu. And on the right, we have an, a second custom item, and this one contains a Contact Form 7 shortcode. And Contact Form 7 is a very popular Contact Form plugin, which you can download from the uh, WordPress repository for free. The other thing to note is that these these two columns created by our custom content areas are not evenly divided, and that's on purpose. We've got the left columns sent to set to two fifths or forty percent of the uh, submenu width, and we've got the right columns set to three fifths or sixty percent of the submenu width. This is the current state of our menu. We've already built the flyout mega menu and images submenus, and now we're going to build the advanced submenu, which we already have a top level item for. So we're going to start off by adding our two custom content uh, items to the menu. And we're going to make both of those child items of the advanced item. Now just to make it easier to keep track of things, we can give these names. You'll notice that by default, uh, it gets the name custom in brackets. But we're going to turn this one into a map. So we'll call it map. And we're going to turn the second one into a contact form. So we will call it contact form. I like to put them in brackets just to note that these are um, they're custom items. We're not actually you know, printing that text. Um, but you can obviously do that however you like. So let's save our menu. See that Advanced now has a submenu, but there's nothing in it. So it's opening, but there's nothing to display. That's because custom content items don't actually have anything in them by default until we add the content to them. So back in our menus panel, we will open up the settings on the map custom item. And you'll see that there's a box here to add custom content. So we can add anything we want into this box. I can just type map and then we'll see that the word map will show up on the front end. There we have it. So um, you can put text, you can put HTML, or you can put short codes into the custom content box. And we are going to use the Uber menu map short code, which comes with Uber menu. So if you look at the documentation in the Uber menu knowledge base, you'll find the article on Google Maps under menu content, uh, included short codes, Google Maps. You'll see that there are a variety of settings here that we can use. But the important one is just to set the address. So you can just copy this short code right out of the database. I'm sorry, right out of the knowledge base. And paste it into your custom content. And there we have a map. Now, that doesn't look very good, obviously. It doesn't look much like the demo. So the first thing we notice is that uh, the map shortcode is going to take up the full width of its column by default, but we haven't given this column an actual width. So what we'll want to do is set this custom content item's width to uh, the 2 fifths or 40% that we discussed earlier. So we'll go into the layout panel and set the column's width to two-fifths. Save that. Now you'll see that this column is two-fifths of the whole submenu, and the map shortcode automatically uh, expands to fill that. Now you could also set the width explicitly within the map's shortcode, 
if you look at the options we have here, you see that there is a width that defaults to 100%, but it's more flexible if you leave it set to 100%. So I recommend changing the size of the column and allowing the map to size to that instead of setting the width of the map explicitly. However, we do want the map to be a bit taller. If we look back at our demo menu, you see this is nice and tall. It's actually 450 pixels tall. The default height for the map is 200 pixels, which is what we're seeing currently in our submenu. So we're going to set the height to 450 pixels instead. And while we're at it, um, we can remove those others, uh, those other attributes. All right, so now we have a 450 pixel tall map. Um, but if we look back at our demo that we're recreating, uh, you'll see two differences. First of all, this map is of San Francisco, and by default our map is of Boston, uh, the one that we copied. And this map doesn't have any space around the, ed of the edge of it. It abuts the edge of the submenu uh, without any padding. So to change those two things, first we'll change our address from Boston, Massachusetts to San Francisco, California. Now our map is of San Francisco. And second, you'll see that this setting pad custom content is checked by default. And that's there because in general, you want your custom content to be aligned with the rest of your content in the submenu. And this will add the same padding that all the other items get. But in this special instance, we want the map to expand wider than the normal content would. So we uncheck pad custom content, save that item. And now you'll see that our map expands uh, to the full width, or I'm sorry, to the full height and extent of the submenu. All right, next let's add the contact form. So we already have our item set up. Now, if you're unfamiliar with contact form seven, um, it's a very simple plugin to use. It has its own interface where you can create multiple contact forms. Um, which we're not going to get into in depth here, but you can you can edit the forms, you can add whatever fields you like, and then it will create a short code for you. And what we're going to do is just copy that short code and paste it into our custom content area. So we'll open the settings for our contact form item, and we will paste our custom content there. All right, so there's our form. Um, obviously, the content is there. It's not exactly like what we were looking to create, and there are a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first main one is, again, we haven't actually set a width for this uh, for this item yet. So it's just taking up sort of the, the minimum width that it can. So first we'll want to set the, uh, the column width for this item to three-fifths. Remember our first item was two-fifths, so we want them to add up to one or 100% total so that they will fill up the entire submenu. So under layout, we'll change the column's width to three-fifths. And now you'll see that that custom content fills up the entire submenu. Um, now it's important to note that these styles for this contact form are not provided by Ubermenu. This is just inheriting styles from the theme that I happen to be using. Now, almost every theme provides styles from contact form 7 because it's the sort of de facto um, contact form solution for WordPress. So your theme will almost certainly uh, have styles for it. Um, if not, you would need to provide your own styles. And some themes, the styles that they provide uh, would only work in a certain area on your site. It might not work in the menu. So the point is, 
your contact form might look different than this and you would need to add custom CSS to style it differently than what you would see. The other difference between our demo menu is that we have a little extra content in the top. So that's just some basic HTML content. So we'll simply put in the custom content box above the shortcode. We'll add some HTML. We'll put a header that says shortcode and widgets. We'll put a paragraph with a little description in it. Save those settings. And there you have it. So there's not much to it, just adding custom content within the submenu and, and setting your columns to the proper widths to recreate that submenu. And remember, you can really place any content that you want inside these submenus that is either text, HTML, or shortcode. Um, just keep in mind that what that does is it, it inserts the HTML markup into the submenu. And then from there, you'll need to style it to, uh, to do whatever or look however you'd like it to look. Because Uberman, you won't style those things by default. It will only style the, the markup that it creates itself.